What up, everybody? This is uh, your podcast, DC Domingo, bringing you uh, awesome good news for DC Comics fans every Sunday. I will be doing more um, as, you know, the TV shows come back and as the excitement of the summer releases come into play. The picture that you're seeing right now, it's a picture of Rorschach with the back signal behind him. Um, if you don't know much about it, basically, um, go check out DC Comics Rebirth. Um, it was a great uh, refocus of the entire DC Comics universe, where uh, they found the Watchmen um, pin, <laughs> bloodstained pin smiley face, uh, in the Batcave. The other cool thing is that you saw some really amazing things that were probably attributed to Dr. Manhattan uh, joining, you know, the entire DC comic universe. It was one of the biggest news last year. This year, it appears that we are going to get, um, you know, uh, the Watchmen being introduced. Uh, earlier this week, we saw some really awesome cover arts of Batman and the Flash investigating uh, the pen. And there has been some um, hints here and there, mostly um, in the titles of Teen Titans uh, about it, but there hasn't been like a really full-on investigation or reveal of um, this event that I'm pretty sure is going to cover summer until the fall. And um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of collectibles. Um, I'll keep you guys informed, giving you guys my awesome, honest opinion on it. Because, you know, a lot of comic book reviewers are not like me. I like to read comics uh, story arc-wise. That's why it takes so long to review some stuff. Um, I don't just want to review, like, um, you know, one minute of a song. I want to review the whole album. So... Um, most of these comics, um, you know, they have long story arcs, so I don't really think it's fair to review them issue by issue. Uh, for instance, uh, Frank Miller's The Dark Knight 3, some of the issues rece receive mixed reviews, some of them say it's the best thing ever, and then some are like, eh. But I think if you're going to criticize the entire, like an entire novel, you don't criticize it chapter by chapter. Um, and that's a problem when you have serialized comics like our industry has. So you'll be getting some reviews when um, most of the things are completely finished and done. So you get some kind of appreciation. Um, for me, I, I kind of grew up with comics, but I also grew up reading, you know, complete stories growing up. Um, I remember that I read Watchmen, the graphic novel, in novel format, not in, you know, serialized monthly comics. So that had a bigger impact in book format than serialized comics. Um, the other things that I've read, you know, in just mostly one sitting, was Final Crisis by Grant Morrison. Um, I started around 9 a.m. <laughs> and I finished around 8 p.m. That was a... Uh, that was an amazing thing, and it's just me not just reading it, you know, kind of flying by through it. No, I actually look at the artwork, the composition. I try to immerse myself into whatever character is speaking or whatever is going on in the world. I try to imagine it myself. It's kind of the magic of being a reader and having creativity. You kind of get to uh, fill in between the panels. You know, I recommend it for everybody else. So I'm really excited about the... Um, the Watchmen coming into the DC Universe because they have Jeff Johns writing it. And some of the new talent uh, from DC, it's really it's really killing it in sales and reviews. Not that that matters to me as a fan, but hey, if more people are excited about comics, hey, everybody wins, right? So that's a really, really awesome news, and that's why I took this awesome picture of uh, Rorschach with the back signal because, you know... I have that poster, and uh, somebody gave me the back signal laser pointer for Christmas, so why not showcase it? Now, these are excellent news, right? Well, if you were, you know, on 
YouTube or Facebook or any social media, there has been about two weeks worth of nothing but BS <laughs> uh, when it comes to uh, negative people talking crap about um, Ben Affleck's Batman movie that he's dropping out, that he's not doing it. And like I said before, this is mostly for clicks because, you know, there are no sources for this. It's mostly like, oh, industry insider, my cousin, you know, so know somebody who works with somebody and blah, 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 blah. Well, um, Ben Affleck had a premiere for his new movie, Live By Night. And um, a lot of reporters asked him the status of this you know, Batman movie, and he was like, yep, I'm still directing it, the script is awesome, but we want to make it tighter, you know, better, um, so yeah, you know, and it really is surprising, because Ben Affleck is on Twitter, <laughs> and none of these sources that claim to have insider info were like, hey, um, yo, is this true, so it's mostly clickbait BS articles, um, and it's pretty sad, you know, because we're talking about, like, uh, corporations and entertainment it's not like we're talking about uh cancer cures or stuff like that um so yeah it's uh it's kind of scummy the way that people you know uh do clickbait nowadays it seems like we're doing a click based economy <laughs> when it comes to online articles which is kind of sad um i haven't seen lift by night um but i'm excited um you know based on the shorts short um you know, uh, clips that I've seen, and, you know, Ben Affleck seems really excited about it, he was on Jimmy Kimmel, you know, he was talking about, um, you know, the Batman, he was like, yeah, we're doing it, it's good, but we want it better, which is great, you don't want your company to, uh, just, you know, churn out these things, like, there's a formula, and they're all bland, you know, um, whatever you make of Batman or Superman, people are still talking about it, <laughs> um, how many people are still, how many people are still talking about Ant Man? You know, and I think that's one of the coolest things that I like about DC is that for me, I enjoy it. I get it. Um, people that don't get it are missing out, um, and they're letting all the haters kind of ruin their day. But you know, hey, you know, um, you like what you like. Speaking of, I normally don't like fighting games. Um, Mainly because, um, you know, um, I'm not a kid anymore, so I don't button smash. I like, uh, you know, a little bit more strategy, a little bit more immersiveness, you know, like um, like Skyrim, Mass Effect, you know, Witcher 3 or something like that, that is a little bit more immersive. So when I heard that there is a sequel to Injustice 2, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, it's not for me. But it does has DC Comics, and it has some pretty cool story attached to it i believe we're getting the story trailer on the 17th which is a tuesday so we're, we'll see uh, because usually with the, in this injustice video games you get um tie-in comics and graphic novels so even if i don't enjoy the fighting game i'm gonna have some pretty cool material coming to me as a consumer that i can you know read and enjoy um so that's pretty nice you know, I might have, um, you know, some reviews on the video game if I end up buying it. If not, you know, there's a lot of YouTubers. I recommend uh, J-Roar, who's a giant DC fan. I'll go ahead and include his link. He's really popular. I don't think he needs the subscriptions, but whatever. <laughs> you know, I like his style, so subscribe to him if you want. He is awesome. Now, the other cool and really awesome news uh, that we have for you this week there it's actually twofold one is that we have an update on the green lantern movie um we have david goyer and justin rhodes as screenwriters and two green lanterns have been confirmed uh hal jordan and john stewart now as far as marketing goes um the uh, studio heads have decided to stick with making DC Comics comparable to other movies. Now, what does that mean? Well, with Man of Steel, they basically, you know, they were inspired by science fiction. 
and they made a dark science fiction film, which a lot of people were like, what? Why? And if you know Superman's origins as a science fiction, there was no superheroes prior to Superman, which fits Man of Steel. Um, when Batman vs. Superman was made, it was basically made, it's a homage to the 1940s movies that were based on Batman and Superman in black and white, uh, part of movie serials. Um, back in the day before television, we had movie serials, and there's been 15 movies of Batman, 15 movies of Superman in black and white uh, from the 19, you know, 40s. And you should check them out if you want to. They're on YouTube. Um, but yeah, you know, so for this, um, Green Lantern's obviously going to be science fiction. Um, now, as far as uh, what material is, is covered, the Green Lanterns are space cops. You know, um, they're the keepers of the peace, as it were. Um, and, you know, one of the seminal buddy cut movies is Lethal Weapon. Even though it has a lot of comedy in it, it was dark for its time. Because <laughs> Mel Gibson was basically dealing with, like, post-stress traumatic syndrome. And, you know, you can't really joke too much with that. I believe that Hal Jordan is going to suffer some of the guilt of being a fly pilot you know, serving in the army, and John Stewart also has a military background, but um, not as um, traumatic as Hal, Hal Jordan. So they're going to be, you know, kind of a nice buddy comedy dynamic in a very serious, dark, you know, uh, sci-fi movie. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, um, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, spoke about this uh, earlier in the week and um, you know he's promised that you know he wants to bring his character his favorite character from DC Comics Black Adam from the Shazam or Captain Marvel comics to life and he doesn't want to force DC Comics to be light for the sake of dumb um, because that would be detrimental to you know, the business model they have going, and also because it wouldn't feel organic. Um, he is promising to have fun with these characters, meaning that they're going to go all out to deliver what's in the comic book pages and not what, you know, hipster internet people think of them. So, you know, um, that's really good news for you know, for DC, and um, looks like the meeting between The Rock and the studio heads was very, very good. Now, oddly enough, I was looking at my timeline on Facebook, and about um, a year ago, towards uh, the end of January, we were treated with a small preview of Batman vs. Superman, and it had a really nice um, 30, well, 22-minute presentation with Kevin Smith and Jeff Jones and we got to see a new trailer for Suicide Squad we got to see like a, the first glimpses of the Wonder Woman uh, footage um, with Patty Jenkins the director so I'm guessing that The Rock released this information because such a TV special might be airing in the CW before the TV shows return which would make sense. Um, they had a giant uh, audience for that special, and I'm pretty sure with the um, awesome Wonder Woman movie coming out, it would be in their best interest to, you know, have a, a similar, you know, showcase event. And yeah, it's very very exciting. So that's for this week. Um, next week, I'm gonna try to get you guys some uh, more DC related stuff. Um, I have a uh, a buddy of mine who also loves DC Comics, and yeah, if you know anybody that likes um, DC Comics, send them my way, and I'll be linking all the cool pages that I and groups that I belong to on Facebook and then Twitter. All right, guys, have a good one. This is DC Domingo saying, "Make it DC." Thank you. Bye.